You guys are not going to believe what my vet surgically extracted from my crocodile skin's head. Oh man, wait till you see today's video. In last week's episode, I invited you into my reptile room for a much needed update on my curious, prehistoric, dragon looking crocodile skinks. Everyone was weighed, fed, and appeared to be happy until we got to the last crocodile skink named Nova. That was when I noticed a large bump on top of her head. Naturally, this was a significant cause for concern, and although I knew she was eating, which was a very good sign, I didn't want to chance a thing, so I booked an appointment for her to see her vet, Dr. Brown, at his earliest convenience. Now, when you're going to the vet, it actually makes a big difference to keep your animals not only in a secure space, but a dark space to limit stress. So I always have them in a nice dark bag so they feel a bit more safe and secure. Well, let's head out to Dr. Brown. Okay, everybody, we just arrived at Campus Estates. It's time to call and bring Nova up to the table and wait patiently and hope for the best. Okay, so we have our white-eyed crocodile skink here. Looks to be in pretty good shape overall. Oh, they make sounds. So, belly looks good. Pretty normal color there. We see there's a little lump on the one side of the head. Very different from the other side. So we'll go ahead with the scalpel. Try to open that up. Put some freezing on there first though. All right, so we've got our emla cream here. It's just like a topical lidocaine. I'm gonna put it on top. Kind of freeze the area while we get started. Leave it there for a few minutes. I've really got to say, I'm so proud of Nova for being such a brave little crocodile skink. If only there was some way for her to understand that what was being done to her was for her own good. Okay, so we've given a little bit of time for the topical freezing to kick in. And now we'll try to clean up the area. It'll never be completely clean. Those lizards usually have some kind of bacteria on there, but we can try to minimize it. This is just a germostat, just like a chlorhexidine soap. And then alcohol is the next step here. Of course, make sure you look at those eyeballs. And then some iodine is our last step. It's just a different kind of germostat, but it can work instead of iodine. Okay. Now, I'm kind of steady my hands, just trying to make a poke at the very top. Using steady hands and the scalpel blade, Dr. Brown begins to create a small incision over the abscess site. This isn't easy because crocodile skinks have very tough skin. Not only this, he has to pay extra close attention to the way he cuts because the abscess is directly above the animal's eye. Got such thick skin, it's tough to get in, but we've made a little tiny hole so far. Okay, a little opening in there. It does look like some kind of Casey's inflammatory tissue. It's looking like Dr. Brown has been able to remove the majority of infected tissue, but there is one last step he wants to take to be 100% sure it's clean. Okay, we're gonna try to flush it out with some saline now. Be right back. Okay, we've got some saline, a little bit better light too. Just see if we can flush any stuff out of there. Okay, 
As you can see here, flushing the wound out with saline proves to be quite effective as Dr. Brown is about to extract a decent sized piece of infected tissue from the abscess site. Look at that. It's good to see it removed. Yeah, you can kind of see on the very tip of the scalpel blade some of the inflammatory tissue in there. It's pretty tough to get out just because it's so small. I don't want to make too much bigger of an incision so close to his eyes. We're also going to have to be sure that we don't get a retrobulbar abscess. So an abscess that's kind of behind the eye that ends up pushing the eyeball out. That kind of thing happens a lot in leopard geckos. I think that might be as good as we can get. We got some of the material out and now we're leaving it open so that hopefully the body can heal and drain out all the bacteria or whatever kind of pathogens in there. Sometimes things like green tree pythons and emerald tree, they can get little parasites that embed in the subcutaneous tissue. If that's the case, they often come back, so I'm not aware of it happening in these guys. Definitely not out of the question though. Alright, let's kind of flush the eyes a little bit now, just in case there's any soap in there. And we'll want them on some antibiotics too to treat any bacteria and if it comes back again maybe repeat the step if it's a little bit larger and get a better sample to send it off for a culture or see what else is going on okay friends now that we've arrived home i want to take a quick moment to thank and let you know about today's video sponsor skillshare skillshare is an online learning community platform where millions come together to take the next steps in their creative journey. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen on existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Those of you who enjoy my YouTube channel content will definitely like class topics such as wildlife photography where you can learn everything there is to know about having success taking photographs or even videos of wildlife around the world. You might also be interested in learning about houseplant care and how to properly care for and maintain your favorite or most popular houseplants. Not only this, I'm learning a lot about social media through this platform because as you all know, this is my full time job. And as such, I'm always looking for opportunities to develop new skill sets and improve those I have to grow my platform, my reach, and just get better at what I love doing. I've been taking a class by Kristen Sarah and Nadine Sitora on YouTube success and how to grow your channel and work with brands and also how to get paid to travel. As my YouTube channels continue to grow, I've been wanting to learn more about how to create these opportunities for my brand and also how to work with destination marketing organizations. This course has been super helpful in enabling me to be able to learn about these incredible and important opportunities in my career. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So now that I've shared with you how exciting this learning platform really is, I'm thrilled to share with you that the first 1,000 viewers to hit the link down below in the description will actually get one full month for free as long as you sign up before the end of October. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Friends, so we just got back from Campus Estates. I haven't had a chance to see the footage taken, but we are all on the same page that little Nova here had a local anesthetic placed over her head and then there was an incision made to release any of the pus or material that was in the abscess. Now the treatment plan, before I pull them out of the bag, friends, needle warning, so skip ahead to this point if you just don't want to see any needle stuff at all. Good old ceftazidine injections. Remember this? This isn't a new rodeo for me. So we're gonna have to administer the ceftazidine subcutaneously under the skin. 
Thank you for clarifying for those that don't know, so I don't have to. Every three days for five treatments. And yes, it is obviously an antibiotic. So we're gonna go ahead and give her the first shot now. Needle warning. We're gonna go ahead and remove one of these. And then the rest goes straight to the freezer. This thaws out super fast, but it does need to be stored there. So usually what I like to do is wait for it to thaw out. Tap it like this. So they always put some air in there. See, I've learned over the span of doing this several times. You want most of that medication because the dose is so small to come to the bottom because they always put some air in it. And we just don't want to force out the actual meds. See, like that, exactly like that. So I'm just trying to, there we go. So that's just about no air, all meds. We're ready. Now, usually with the croc skinks, what I like to do is alternate between their front arms. The animals are very uh, well armored, you could say. Oh, there you go. You can really see the uh, wound there. You can see where Dr. Brown opened it up. I usually restrain one of the arms. Today we're gonna go with the right arm, I think. Like so. You're okay, you're okay, no, no, it's all right. It's just like that. And then we're going to come in on a slight angle and get that needle in. So one thing we really wanna do also, uh, just for when we are administering this medication, we wanna keep the bevel of the needle facing out like so, kind of away from the arm. And that will sort of allow the needle to go in more smoothly as opposed to having it facing downward and poking in. So try to do that. It makes a bit of a difference for the animal's level of comfort. So I'm gonna go in here. We have the animal secured between the scales. Draw back, nothing in. There we go, meds are in. Just gently hold the thumb there, poor girl. Okay, good to put her back in her enclosure now, I think. Okay, sweet girl. Go ahead. Are you home? There she goes. In three days, we'll have to give her the next shot. So friends, I'm not going to show the full process of treating this animal, but this is three days later and I just want to show how different and incredibly well healed her cut already is. As you can see, you can hardly even tell that there was any incision even made and that's what we like to see. She's really back to her old ways and doing phenomenally. I'm so happy, I've shared the update with Dr. Brown and he's very happy to see this as well. I'm going to continue to administer the antibiotics and I'm sure she's going to make a full recovery. So thank you so much for checking this out. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all if you've ever had to take one of your pet reptiles or amphibian to see a veterinarian. Let me know in the comment section down below and perhaps you'd like to share what the reason was for the appointment. Hopefully your animal is doing better now, but I'm curious to see who is taking their pets to the vet and why. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and hopefully we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thank you. Well friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing the process of getting Nova to a healthy state. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Dr. Brown of Campus Estates Animal Hospital, as well as Kayla, one of their vet technicians, who was kind enough to provide us with this fantastic footage of the minor surgery. With that all being said, I want to take the time to thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or remarks you want to share, and I can't wait to see you all for our next video. Take care, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your week.